All right, so this interesting little shotgun. I wanted to talk real quick on this. I took it out and shot it. Uh, it's a $99 shotgun. That's what I bought it for. Uh, imported under Rock Island Arsenal. Uh, the shotgun is made uh, out of turkey. And uh, again, just a very simple single shot 12 gauge. Uh, I took it out and shot it, and here's kind of my thoughts on it. Number one, the gun works just fine. Uh, the only issue that I experienced, and this was after I noticed, this screw right here started to come a little bit loose, so I uh, tightened it down again. I'll probably throw some thread locker in there, and then that won't be an issue anymore. Uh, the gun is nice and compact. I'll show you here how the gun folds down, kind of like the Hatfield shotguns that Walmart has sold. It's pretty much the same deal. Uh, comes with a couple different chokes, all that good stuff. Very inexpensive. Just a basic single shot shotgun. Uh, I had no issues with it. You know, it's nice and light and it swings easy. Um, I had no real issues with the action of the gun, loading the gun, unloading the gun, all that stuff was good to go. Now, lightweight, because of it being so lightweight, uh, this thing is really easy to swing and, and move around, but there's a cost. Uh, the damn thing recoils heavy. Uh, it kicks like a mule. I am certainly not recoil sensitive. Recoil doesn't typically bother me. Uh, and after a while of shooting this, I kind of started shaking my head. Um, she bucks. She bucks a lot. And uh, it's just one of those things, I think that's just the price to pay of having an ultra, ultra light shotgun. I mean, this isn't even wood. This is like a plastic. Both of these are like a plastic alloy. Uh, the buttstock's not very forgiving. So uh, a great, great shotgun. It really is, and it's fun to shoot. But if you are a little bit recoil sensitive, I do not recommend getting the 12 gauge version of this. I might suggest either the 20 or probably better off the 410. Uh, I thought about getting the 410 model to accompany this just so that way I had a 410 and uh, just kind of see how that does. And I think that'll probably be a lot better as far as uh, just recoil management and whatnot. And just be kind of cool to have a 410 again. I know 410 has limited use uh, when compared to a 12 gauge, but you know, it's a cool little uh, bore size. So I may try it again. We'll see. The, uh, again, the kicker, <laughs> no pun intended, is this dang thing bucks and bucks hard. So uh, I do not recommend putting this behind um, or putting this in the hands of an, exper an inexperienced shooter, somebody that's new to the world of firearms. I think that's going to be pretty sadistic. Uh, and I say that because some people like to do that. I don't know how many times I've seen a brand new person of firearms, they put them behind a heavy recoiling, whether it's a handgun, rifle, or shotgun. They take off one shot and that's it. They're done. They've now developed a fear of firearms and they just don't want to shoot anymore. So don't do that. Um, I really, really strongly urge you don't do that. Uh, for like, you know, for survival and utility purposes and, and, and all that good stuff, then yeah, you know, this, this shot going to be great. Uh, as long as the recoil is not an issue for you, uh, it seems to be accurate enough. No issues there. It has multiple chokes so you can kind of tune how uh, you want to do things. I have the most restrictive choke in and I have these federal uh, flight control double out buck loads. I figure that'll give me the most bang for the buck here. Uh, it's already a nice tight grouping round. Federal makes really good rounds for shotguns. Well, the addition of that choke should help it a little bit and keep it even grouped a little bit tighter for a little bit longer. That's kind of the mindset behind it anyway. Uh, but you can also use slugs in this and, and, and do whatever you want. Now, another note. I only shot two and three quarter inch. And the heaviest load I shot was a two and three quarter inch, uh, the old S&B double lot buck. That's it. This thing can take three inch magnums. Um, holy crap. I, I, I thought about taking a three inch after shooting it. I'm like, whoo, maybe I should shoot a three inch magnum out of it. And then I just decided not to because I'm not that sadistic, or at least I wasn't feeling in a huge sadistic mood that day. But um, holy crap, man. Uh, that's got to hurt shooting a three inch out of this thing. But in any case, um, I don't think there's any way you could 
make it better without making it a little bit heavier and it kind of it is what it is i mean single shot shotgun there's not much you can do to it they're kind of a little bit punishing but the older ones like the rossies h and r and all those kinds that i've shot they just didn't recoil as bad different design wooden stocks you know i, I i'm not sure but um that's just kind of my main point on this thing is if you're going to get it just you know be ready for it make sure it's tucked into your shoulder really good um so that way you don't get any shoulder slap and start bruising up your your shoulder from the recoil so all right uh my quick thoughts for 99 bucks i mean it's it's a 99 dollar gun it's cheaper than the high point and it's a cool little gun i like it i really do it is it's pretty cool uh very simple to operate if you don't know the trigger guard right here pushes to the back and then it opens up load your shot this does not have an ejector just an extractor so you have to manually take the old shell out put a new one in um it has a dual little rear pseudo sight and then there's your hammer right there no external safety so anywho there it is um and just keep an eye on if you're shooting keep an eye on this screw right here this is the screw that kind of holds this trigger guard assembly in place uh from what i can see and uh just kind of keep an eye on that in case because they may have just been the recoil and, and the fact that maybe they don't have any thread locker in there that uh it started to come loose on me a little bit i didn't notice it until i was back at home uh, and i just tightened it up no big deal but just kind of keep an eye on it the gun comes tight when you buy it the action's a little bit tight as far as opening and closing but once you do it a couple times uh it'll get nice and loose for you then you'll be good to go so all right uh that's enough out of me uh i can't really think of anything more else useful to say uh oh good mod for any single shot shotgun just get these cheap little nylon this one's an uncle mike's i think it's these cheap little nylon sleeves that you get for like five six seven eight nine dollars at stores um and when you put it on you kind of use the uh, sling mount attachment here as a way to secure it so it doesn't slide up and down but this is a great great thing for single shot shotguns I'm a big advocate for shotguns. You always want to make sure to have a additional source of ammo with the gun. Um, that just makes sense to me uh, for single shots and for pumps and semi-autos, all that good stuff. Shotguns are just kind of an interesting little beast. You want to have some ammo with it. So um, these things work really good. I've never really had any issue with any of these things falling apart or anything over use. So... Um, for this, it holds five rounds for the 410, and if I get a 410, that's what I'll do. If I get a 410 model like this, I'll put, what you want to do is you put a rifle cuff on this, which is the same as this, but it's meant for rifle rounds. But the 410 bore is so small that you can fit uh, nine rounds of 410. That's kind of a neat thing right there that you get a 10-shot capacity right there. It's a smaller smaller size. you got a 10-shot overall gun carrying capacity versus a six shot here which is what this has uh it'd be one in the one in the uh chamber and then five on the sleeve 410 would be nine on the sleeve typically on most rifle sized uh cuffs they have nine slots and then you have an extra one in the mag so or, or in the uh chamber so to speak so in any case um I again I'll probably get the 410 at some point especially if they start going on sale even more so I mean if I can find one cheap enough why not it's a good little fun gun to have uh for packing uh some of you may be looking at this for packing and I'm sorry I know I said I was done talking here but I just keep I don't have a script when I do these videos by the way I'm not like nothing fancy or any of those folks that just have this huge talking point thing I tried that before and I kind of hated it but anyway, this thing right here, so there it is, uh, folded. So that's kind of cool. Uh, as far as packability, I can see the packability there, and um, I haven't really tried it. But uh, it does fold down, and I can see with my backpacks and stuff, I'll be able to, um, to fold it and put it inside. But with the way I have, the way my packs are set up and the type of packs I have, I have a lot of molly and stuff on the sides and everything. What I'd probably rather do instead of leaving this folded and throwing it inside, 
I think it would be better if I wanted to have this on the pack versus in my hands, I would keep this put together like that and I would just lash it to the side of the pack. Lash it to the side of the pack, barrel down, uh, no round in the chamber uh, for a little bit of extra safety and then just carry it that way. So that way when I need it, I can theoretically take it off the backpack a little bit easier than versus opening up the backpack, reaching inside, funneling for it, getting, getting it caught on things as I yank it out, all that good stuff. So anyway, just my thoughts. But all right, enough rambling out of me. Uh, give your thoughts on this. Again, great, awesome shotgun. I really like it, 99 bucks, but it's going to buck the heck out of your shoulder if you don't pay attention. All right, stay safe.